Welcome to the channel Trim It Color. We are on process of making this scene. In the previous videos you have seen how to model this hut, the tree, how to unwrap it, how to sculpt it in ZBrush and also we have textured it in Substance Painter. And in this video I will show you how to render all those maps we have extracted from Substance Painter inside Maya by using Arnold. So let's get started. Here you can see we have extracted all these maps from Substance Painter like color map, metallic map, roughness map and also you can see I have separated all the height maps inside this folder so that I can find out the maps very easily. Now let's jump to Maya. You can remember I was working with this scene and this is the tree model, rest of the models I have kept inside the layer and I have hidden it. So I'll start doing the shading with this tree. So let's go to Hypershed. You can see I have created my own tab called Tree. You can create your own tab by clicking on this plus sign and by double clicking on it you can rename it. So going back to the Tree tab, selecting our Tree material and clicking on this Show Input Output Connection shortcut and you can see the tree material we have created. Now going to my 2D textures and I'm going to create four file textures. One for the color, one for the roughness, one for the normal map and one for the displacement map. Because these four textures we have created in Substance Painter. So I'll go to the attribute editor and I will rename each of these files. So this will be tree displacement map. This will be tree color map. This will be tree roughness. And this will be tree normal map. Alright. At the beginning, I'll start working with displacement map. When I'm quite satisfied with the result, I'll move on to the next three maps. Selecting the material and going to the attribute editor. And in the attribute editor, you cannot find the displacement property. So I'm going to this node. This is called the shading node. And over here, you can find the attribute of the shading node and you can see the displacement property over here. So we need to connect the displacement map over here. So just go to this map and middle mouse drag and drop it on displacement property. And now you can see this map is connected with the material. And this is the displacement node automatically created. Now selecting this file texture and browsing the displacement map. So this is the displacement map. Just open it. Over here a few things to do. Make sure the filter type is off and this image is an EXA file so color space should be wrong. Now let's render it once. You can see we are getting some information over here. But before doing anything, let's disconnect this displacement map from the shader. So I am just deleting it and render it once again. And in rendering you can see I already have taken a HDR image. Alright, just to zoom in a little bit. And you can see now clearly that we are not getting displacement information over here. So I will keep the image over here and once again I will connect the displacement map with the material. Select the region and let's render it once again. Alright, you can see we are getting displacement information. And one thing you understood, because of the displacement map, we are getting the displacement information. So the job of displacement map is this. But when I am toggling it, you can see the displacement distortion is coming out of the surface. It should not happen. Right? So we need to fix it. Selecting the displacement node and going to its property and clicking on Arnold. 
and can you see one option called auto bump so i'm just clicking it off and let's check in rendering what's happening and you can see i'm losing all the displacement information but the surface is coming out so whatever information we're getting from the displacement map it was just a fake auto bump from the displacement map so now let's check how to get true displacement on this geometry so the object is selected and i'm going to its shape node this is the transform node and you can see this is shape is written so this is the shape node i'm going to the arnold option let's go to the subdivisions making the type from none to cat clerk and iteration i'm making it maybe two for now and let's render if we are getting displacement information and you can see we are getting displacement information over here so this iteration actually is subdividing the geometry and through that we are getting the true displacement suppose the iteration value is three then actually you are subdividing the geometry three times so automatically you will get better result in zbrush you can remember we have subdivided the geometry so many times so over here i am making the value four and let's render this time the result is quite good can you see we are getting much more displacement information in this and you also can see how the geometry is deformed and coming out of the surface in normal map you cannot get this kind of displacement and that is the basic difference between normal map and displacement map normal map is just an illusion but displacement map we are getting true displacement this value can be more and the result can be a little better but this is just for the demonstration i am making it for only and not increasing it because it will take the rendering time if i increase it and now let's go to the displacement attribute so first of all this is the height so this is the displacement height we are getting now if you want to increase it you can increase the height and this is the bounce padding sometimes at the edge you can get cut mark flat cut mark and just to avoid that bounce padding can be one in this case it is not distorting anything but still i'm making it one to be in safer side and that's all in the setting in the shape node so let's render it once again that's looking good but still one problem is there and that is the displacement is coming out of the geometry as if the tree is scaling up so let's check how to get rid of that so selecting the displacement map and going to the color balance option and over here you can see we are having two properties one is alpha gain one is alpha offset so let's try to understand why these two properties are very important while sculpting in zbrush sometime we added clay on the surface and sometime we extracted clay from the surface that means what the original surface is going inside and when adding clay the original surface is coming out so if we take the original surface as value zero then the surface is going inside that has to be negative value and the surface is going outside that has to be positive value so alpha gain will decide how much the surface is coming out means the positive value and alpha offset should define how much the surface is going inside while extracting the clay so it has to be a negative value in my opinion alpha offset can be half of alpha gain and this can be a very good combination now one second let's render the scene all right this is looking fine now let's check and can you see the problem has gone and the displacement we are getting just above the surface so there is no scaling now it is absolutely fine i'm quite satisfied with the result now going back to the displacement and if you can remember i clicked off the auto bump i'm clicking it on and let's render it once again that's looking fine another thing to discuss sometimes if through auto bump i am getting enough small detailing 
I don't use normal map once again until unless in my model so many small detailing is there. Like in the case of a face, so many small small pores are there so we have to use normal map. So this is a personal choice you need to understand it and need to use it. Alright so this was the job of the displacement map. Now I am coming to the color map. So this is my color map and once again I am browsing my file texture. Just open it. Make sure the color space has to be sRGB. Selecting my material once again and this is the base color option and this is the color. I'm dragging and dropping my file texture over the color and you can see the color is visible now and let's make the weight all the way to 1 and this is the metalness option. If you are having a metallic map, you need to connect it over here. In this case, I'm not having any metallic map. So if your object is metallic, you need to connect the map over here. Alright, let's do the rendering once again. Alright, now you can see I am getting the color of the tree. Now once again moving to the hypershade and selecting the material and going to the peculiarity and inside that you can see the roughness option. Before doing anything, let's make it 0 and let's make the weight 1 and let's render it once again. And you can see I am getting the sharp specular highlight all over the surface and that is because of the roughness and that is 0. And if I am increasing the roughness a little bit, I am keeping this image and I am rendering it once again. Let's check what will happen. You can see now the specular highlight is not that much sharp but it is blurred. All right? So the roughness property can manipulate the specular highlight. So now coming to the roughness map and just browse the map we have created. So this is my map. Just open it. Color space will be sRGB. Now selecting the material and just drag and drop the roughness map on the roughness property. Let's render it. Alright, now moving forward, our next map is the normal map. So select the map and just browse it. So this is our map. Open it. Now selecting the material once again and let's come down and over here I'm going inside the geometry and you can see the bump mapping. So I'm just dragging and dropping on bump mapping and the bump node is automatically created at the same time. And over here you can see the effect of the bump and use the bump as tangent space normal. Let's render it. It is alright but the moss region is a little bit too much exaggerated. So I'm coming to the bump depth and making it maybe 0.1 and let's render it once again. I think we are almost done. And here you have seen how to connect all the different different maps to the material and how we are getting the output of a particular object. And as you know in this scene we are having several more objects like the heart, stone and the base. And as you can see, I have already connected all the maps with all those materials in the same process. So I'm not repeating the same process once again. And I hope now you know how to connect all the maps to your material and you can get your texturing done. So this is the final render we have got from this series. So this is the last video of this series. Hope you have enjoyed it. And thank you very much for your comments, your suggestions and all the motivations you have given. I also appreciate your patience. I will come up with more videos, more subjects. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. And thank you very much for watching.